back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. Controversy has erupted about yet another book in school libraries. It feels like every single week we have a new lewd, sexual, semi-pornographic piece of content that parents are discovering that their children are being given in schools, which is just depressing and disgusting. But that is sadly the state of our world in 2023. This book is called Lawn Boy, and it is a coming-of-age novel about a Mexican-American lawn boy. But of course, you got to hit all the intersectional notes, so he is gay. But contrary to what the left might like to think, parents do not have a problem with his race or his sexuality. They have a problem that in the book, there are 10-year-old boys engaging in oral sexual acts. Now, before we get into the story, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you've not already, and ring the notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Parents first started coming to school boards about this book back in 2021 after a Texas mom pointed out the lewd sexual passages. Her son had read the book and had been given to him by the librarian. She was appalled. She came in and she gave a presentation. Now, since then, it has been contested in 35 states. I believe it was suspended in about half of those schools, but only permanently banned in four of the schools. So here's the original video. On page 19, not that it really matters in fourth grade, at a church youth group meeting out in the bushes, I touched Doug Goebel's dick and he touched mine. In fact, there, were, there was even some mouths involved. Next one, page 91. What if I told you I touched another guy's dick? What if I told you I sucked it? I was 10 years old, but it's true. I put Doug Goebel's dick in my mouth. I was in fourth grade. It was no big deal. He sucked mine too. And you know what? It wasn't terrible. Page 174. I don't know if I quoted, if I made a sign for this one. Yeah, I did. So um, disgusting. He talked about old times at the church, but never mentioned our penises or the fact that he never said 10 words to to me after our little foray in the bushes. Not a single reference to holding or tugging or sucking dicks. All I could think about while he was chatting me up was his little salamander between my fourth grade fingers rapidly engorging with blood. Page 230, I didn't make a sign for this. Why won't you admit we sucked each other's dicks? We shared a Hershey's bar, then you showed me your dick. The next thing I know it's in my mouth, we sucked each other's dick, and you're pretending it didn't happen. I watched this now three times, obviously, because I was prepping for this episode. It, it's disgusting. That is not just insinuating something sexual. I mean, how many times is Dick said in this book that is put in public school libraries for middle and high schoolers? I was thinking back to my time in like that same age demographic. And I remember not even being allowed to read Lolita because it was pedophilic and there were, you know, sexual things in it. I'm genuinely curious for those of you who are, you know, working in schools, who are in schools, is Lolita given out to high schoolers at this point? Because at that time that was like, oh, that's way too inappropriate. But now this is a book that's just casually here talking about oral sex. Like we have in the last 10 years, what is acceptable has drastically changed. This is not about the fact that the character is gay. This is not about the fact that he's Mexican, anything like that. It is the fact that we are depicting sexually lewd acts to children. The Washington Post, however, doesn't really think that this is a big deal. They recently published an article about the book. This is how I learned about the whole situation. And rather than addressing the content of the material, they chose to villainize this mother and the other parents who are protesting this type of content in schools. The article's title is a mom wrongfully said the book showed pedophilia. School libraries banned it. How misinformation about Lawn Boy, a book that was never intended for children, made it the second most contested book last year. But first, before they get into all of that, they literally admit that what the parents were speaking out about was actually in the book. Berkman's three-minute speech recounted passages that describe a sexual encounter between two 10-year-old boys. Quoting pages 19, 91, 174, and 230, she told the room full of adults how the boys meet in the bushes after a church youth group gathering, touch each other's penises, and progress to oral sex. What they failed to mention is how there are like six other examples of that in the book that progress into adulthood where they are remembering the fact that they were sexual at 10 years old. So no, that is not misinformation, Washington Post. That is just people having a different opinion about this content than you. That is not the definition of misinformation. Somebody replied and said, misinformation, a liberal's favorite word that they love to constantly overuse and abuse. Correct. They then direct their attention to a mother in Virginia, the original mother was in Texas, who also spoke out about the book and another book that included graphic images of sex toys and sexual acts. But rather than having any substantive conversation about the content of the books or why they were in schools in the first place 
or why some people might think that it's okay, they attack her for calling it pedophilia. They wrote Lawn Boy and the people who targeted it also illustrate how misinformation germinates. Days after Berkman's speech, a Virginia mother, inspired by her comments, falsely asserted during a school board meeting that Lawn Boy depicts a sexual encounter between an adult man and a 10-year-old boy. Her claim, caught on video, was repeated on social media and in news reports and magnified by prominent politicians, spawning pedophilia claims in nearly a dozen school districts, the Post found. The saga of Lawn Boy further shows how concerns about public education spread, fueled by conservative media coverage, political speeches, and advocacy for religious and parents' rights groups. Oh my God, the audacity of people to want parents' rights. How dare they? In response, mothers and fathers across the country scoured their school library catalogs, signed up for public comment at school board meetings, and filed challenges against books. God forbid parents actually engage with their school. God forbid parents actually get involved and go speak to a school board. That's why those meetings exist, right? So the parents can come and complain, they can come and they can share their thoughts, but now you're suddenly so offended that people have the right to free speech and to be involved in their child's education. Now, to be totally fair here and fair to the Post, when the mom, the mom in Virginia, got into the specifics about Lawn Boy, she did say that there were sexual acts between a 10-year-old and an adult. That is not the case. It is an adult talking about two 10-year-old boys engaging in sexual acts. It is written from that perspective. However, she is correct in saying that the older character later on is fantasizing about that 10-year-old sexual act. The little salamander between his fingers, thinking about all of that. That is objectively pedophilic. Here is her comments. After seeing a September 9th school board meeting in Texas on pornography in the schools, I decided to check the titles at my child's school, Fairfax High School. The books were available, and we checked them out. Both of these books include pedophilia, sex between men and boys. Both books describe different acts. One book describes a fourth grade boy performing oral sex on an adult male. That's the no, other that's book incorrect. has detailed illustrations of a man having sex with a boy. The illustrations include this fellatio, sex toys, masturbation, and violent nudity. Pedophilia here. From the author, Maya Kobabe, quote. And then of course they turn off her mic as they often do. This is not an oversight at Fairfax High I'm School. I'm sorry. May, may this I, yes. may I material, please make a point of, there are children in the audience here. Do not here interrupt my standard. time. It cracks me up, it actually is more than just funny it's like disgustingly ironic there are so many cases at these school board meetings where parents are saying this is lewd this is sexual my child read this in school and the members of the school board go i'm sorry we need we need to keep you quiet there, there are children here yeah you gave the book to children in the first place so is it acceptable for young ears and eyes or is it not or are you just uncomfortable and you don't want to deal with the ramifications of things that your teachers and your administration and your school board have allowed to happen those two things cannot be true at once Okay, we're gonna let her continue. Do not interrupt my time. I would like to remind everybody. I will stand here until my time is restored and my time is finished. These books are in stock and available in the libraries of Robinson, this is high the important part. Langley, yes, and Annandale High School. Pornography is offensive um, to all Clark. people. It is offensive to common decency. It is the reason why the speaker. MPAA is our next speaker is Alex Levine. It's so good. Now, in my opinion, I think the last part of her public comment is the most important where she is just making the broad general statements about what is appropriate for children in public schools. Because even though she did get some of the facts about Lawn Boy incorrect when she was first talking about the book, which is important to point out, and it's important that the Washington Post said that, even though they're now running with that story and saying that, you know, everything about Lawn Boy is now fabricated, which is not true. Even though she got some of those things wrong, that does not throw her argument out the window. Because even though there might not have been a 10 year old boy having sex with an adult, there is still pedophilic content in that book. It is still sexually lewd. There are still sexual themes about young, young children that would not be appropriate for high schoolers to read. Point blank, that is the argument she is making and that still holds. And even though one parent 
got that wrong. Her outrage is still warranted, in my opinion. Somebody commented on a post about this on Twitter and said, what happened to the classics? And somebody else said, they're all white supremacy classics now. Yeah, we can't read the books that had great values and had amazing characters who went on adventures and who had great friendships and, you know, taught your kids how to be, you know, smart, independent, capable people. Now we're just teaching them how to have oral sex, apparently. But the story does not end there. What about the author? How did this book even get written? How did it get put on public school shelves? Apparently, the author never intended for the book to be seen by young people. This is from Daily Mail. Author of LGBT book Lawn Boy, which describes two 10-year-old boys giving each other oral sex, admits graphic story was never meant for school libraries as livid parents force woke teachers to pull it from the shelves in the U.S. Now, it ended up in schools because in 2019, it received an award from the American Library Association in 2019 for, quote, its special appeal to young adults. Like, you freaks. Now, obviously, the young adult genre In my opinion, these days, it's more of like easy reads for adults. It's not actually for teenagers, but it kind of gets convoluted because a lot of young adult literature, even though these days it is written for adults, it gets put in there with teen literature that would not be appropriate for young people. I remember at one point I picked up a book that was, you know, YA, probably at the end of my high school career. It was so sexual. It it was disgusting. And I like got halfway through it and I was like, this is, I don't even want to read this. So it gets convoluted. Just because something is YA does not mean it is appropriate for minors. But somehow librarians decided this is great. And they got an award and they put it in schools. The author himself said that the sexual content in the book would be, quote, too profane for young people. And that his novel, which is an exploration of the racial assumptions and the failures of late capitalism, is meant for adults. This is from the Washington Post. And if schools want to offer the text, he said that they should restrict access to older students. Nobody below a teenager is ready for that book. It's got a lot of adult stuff. I don't even think school should be giving it to teenagers because of how sexual it is. If a kid wants to read that book, it should be run by his parents. It should not be given to them by a librarian that's like, oh, you're gonna really like this. No. If it is that controversial, if it is that sexual, don't put it in schools. Now, nevertheless, even though the author is on record saying that the book is not appropriate for young people, even he is now fighting back against the parents because his book is now, you know, a point of contention in this very, you know, politically divisive social landscape. He wants to be on the progressive side. He wants to be in the fight. So he said he questioned whether some parents who complained, quote, don't like a marginalized, non-white, non-cisgender character trying to be comfortable and find their place in the culture. It's not about their race or their gender or their sexuality. It is about the sexual content. I don't care if it's about a gay, young Mexican, nobody cares at all. It's about the fact that there are two 10-year-old boys engaging in oral sex. That's the problem. You are avoiding it. Then he went on and said, I think that the end game of these people is that they want to keep the status quo. And the best way to do that is to not have these stories told. What, the status quo of we should not be talking about sex to young people, especially not away from their parents outside of their family? Yeah, that's a status quo that I am totally fine keeping in place. Like, seriously, which is it? Because you're flip-flopping back and forth between it not being appropriate for children and then it being an essential story for challenging the status quo of all of these parents that have apparently sticks up their asses. Now, I only gave tidbits of that entire Washington Post article, but if you are interested in understanding about how they feel about parents who stand up for their children against this kind of content, how they feel about the, you know, the conservative propaganda machine, I would highly recommend reading it. It is a long article. They have all these different graphs of how like conservative misinformation spreads specifically about content in schools. It's just wild the way that they are able to jump to all of these conclusions and spin these arguments. And I think it's just important information for everybody to know. I mean, to sum it up, they are horrified that parents would be awake and ready to protect their kids. They are horrified that parents want to be engaged in their child's education. Like that's the world we're living in. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.